Hello, I am Kristen and welcome to my channel of healing my body and mind through nutrition and exercise. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button, like and comment. So let's get right into it, right? Um, I stopped going more animal based and stopped eating fruit because I got inflamed in my hands, my neck issue came back and so there was two reasons. It was either pineapple that triggered it because that's exactly when it started bothering me or it was that I ate fruit every single day for about 16 to 17 days. It's really hard to determine which one is what caused the inflammation in my hands and in my neck. So I just stopped eating fruit altogether and went back full carnivore. And I'm starting to feel a lot, lot better. This part of my hand still hurts a little bit, but nowhere near the pain that I was in for like two to three days straight after eating the pineapple. And my neck, I have gone to my chiropractor. I did decompression last week, which helped tremendously. And I just felt like there was still something out. So I went again today, did some more decompression, got another adjustment. And I felt that one pop that I feel was what well, I couldn't get last time I was there because I was so stiff and in so much pain. So hopefully this is the road to recovery for my neck issue and back into my routine. Today I started a new program working out and it has primal moves and stretching and I'm absolutely loving it even though it's only day one. This personal trainer is one of my favorites and I love how he implements his workouts, what he does, how he explains it to you. And so I am really excited to do this new program four days a week, about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. So that is my jam. <laughs> I love when I don't need to spend over an hour working out, but get a really good workout in. So I am excited to see the results. I still have like this little tiny pudge that I don't think is gonna go away because I do think there's a term for it, I forget, where the part of your stomach here kind of indents a little bit and the muscles are not quite there the way that they were before having a baby. And I think that especially have, after having my second that I had pushed so hard that the blood vessels came to my face it looked like I had freckles uh, and with my third I, I have like this funky little punch there where the belly button is so it is what it is it's part of the journey of having my children and the way that my body is now so it's just something that either I have to live with or I have to work on and do more core workouts I definitely know that I need to build my core because it's been a little bit weak lately especially I could feel it because of my low back issues and so I'm hoping that this program works my core and I get stronger. So that is my goal there. Back to carnivore. So yesterday was Cinco de Mayo and I made tacos. So I did a um, tacos with these tortillas that are made from just egg whites. They are really, really good. They do the job, they fold, they don't break, and it gives my husband and I the feel of having tacos with the kids. So I made um, carne ripiado, like uh, shredded beef, and I did it in my Instapot. Super, super easy recipe I could share with you. If you like, leave it in the, leave it in the comments and I'll share with you my recipe. Um, I make it very, very simple. And then that same juice from the meat becomes my beef broth. So it's a win-win. And I did decide I had two small avocados. So I did a little guacamole. I didn't add onions or tomatoes. I just did a simple smash of the avocado and added a little bit of lemon juice to it. If you have an issue with lemon juice, don't add it. If you're not eating avocado, don't eat it. But I did want to see how I would react since it's already been a while since I've had any type of fruit in my diet. And so because it was Cinco de Mayo and I didn't want these avocados to go bad, I'm like, I'm going to make a little guacamole to go on top of my taco. And I'll post it right here, the little video or the photo that I did of the spread of what we had. And 
a little sour cream and some cheese and I did add a little bit of cilantro because I love cilantro and I've had it before in the past and I don't have any issues with eating that and it's not something that I add to every dish so when I am eating a little bit of Mexican food I like to add that to my dish so that was really really good and I saw no issues now one thing that I will say is a TMI fast forward if you like but we're gonna go into bowel movements I've had really soft diarrhea watery bowel movements and sadly I think it's the bacon so I cut my bacon from eating two with my breakfast to one but I was still having a little bit of stomach ache and we'll go to the bathroom and it was still the same <laughs> it's so hard for me because I love bacon and it's like how much more can you take away from me but it is what it is so today I did not have bacon I actually went out to breakfast with a friend this place I've gone to before I actually did a video on it it's called crema gourmet and it's here I don't know if it's anywhere else but I know that it's here local in Miami and I already know that they are good with me telling them that I cannot have any seed oils only cooked in butter so I had the smoked salmon on the side my egg omelet and cream cheese on the side absolutely delicious and that's what I ate today as well with a cappuccino with half and half because they don't have uh, heavy cream so I opted for the half and half but you'll see that picture here I'll post that here and that was absolutely delicious they make a really really good breakfast so no bacon no bacon and I will count how many days I don't have bacon and see how my bowel movements get wait till it gets normal I probably still won't have bacon just to see and then maybe implement one slice just to see what happens but I usually don't have this issue for this long with my stomach usually by now I'm good I've had issues where I have too much rendered fat and I already know that that causes my microscopic colitis to flare up and um, so I know the reason behind it um, but usually I don't have this issue with bacon and I don't know if it's because I've been really eating bacon more often pretty much every day with my breakfast and right before I get my period my stomach usually kind of messes up this has been before carnivore and so it's still kind of happening even throughout carnivore where right when I'm getting my period and throughout my period my stomach is not at its best and so that happens I finished my period already so let's see let's see if no bacon is the key to fixing my stomach issue and if I implement bacon maybe once every other day or every few days versus every single day maybe I can do that hopefully I could do that and hopefully it's not an issue where I can't have bacon at all because if I'm talking to the food gods I want them to know <laughs> I want the universe to know <laughs> to not take my bacon from me okay do not take my bacon from me um that's about it <laughs> everything else has been going great high energy as you can see um no fatigue no depression my anxiety has been good i was anxious the other day but that was more of a situational thing and i noticed that in certain situations when i have to i don't want to say what it is so when a certain situation comes up and i have to confront it and i need to do something with this situation it makes me anxious and i think that's just my personality it is something that i do have to work on mentally more than nutritionally but i will say that my anxiety is so much better i have not had that full-blown heavy anxiety so plus 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 with carnivore and as much as sometimes I miss my pasta and I think about the foods that I love to eat and I want to eat sometimes, I also think about how shitty I feel when I do eat those foods. Like the time that I ate the smallest piece of croqueta this big, I swear, I am not kidding. I wish I would have taken a picture of it and how I had anxiety for two days and really, really bad anxiety the next. So it's just not worth it. It's not worth it uh, when I had chicharron and I know that it was probably not fried in the best oil and I ate it and the next day two days in a row full-blown anxiety so I know that seed oils canola oil as much as people may want to say that 
there's not enough evidence of it doing harm. It may not be harmful to you. You may not see a physical reaction, but it's not good for you. And I personally, for me on my journey in my body, it is not good for me. Um, you have to see what works for you. There's no one size fits all in the carnivore diet or in any diet that you want to try. And every body is different. So take it as you want. I hope that your journey is doing good. Where are you on your journey? What day are you on? I'm on, I have to look it up. I keep forgetting. I'm really bad with remembering numbers and dates. Um, but I am like on 124 days of carnivore where I was going to do about 30 and I don't see an end right now. Right now it is a continuing educational learning my body type of journey where I'm seeing what works for me and what doesn't and I eventually will probably add a little bit more fruit. I'm actually really scared to try pineapple again because I think that maybe it wasn't just eating it two weeks in a row as much as maybe the pineapple. My friend told me that she had or her husband had a reaction to pineapple one time um, with like an eczema flare up and so it could be an infl it could have inflamed my joints. I, I, it's so crazy. It's so crazy, but it is what happened to me. So hopefully I'll see, maybe I'll document it. Maybe I'll, I'll show you <laughs> me eating my pineapple and then trying to see uh, what happens next. I do have pineapple at home, but I am so scared to try the pineapple because that pain in my hands and now that my neck is starting to feel better I do not want that to come back at all so stay tuned stay tuned keep following along and I will see you again tomorrow